Pilar, thanks to EIF for um, inviting me. But the first thing is actually surprising that we're here today uh, speaking about cars in the Internet Foundation. I mean, when I was young, when I was younger, um, there was a popular scientist, he died recently, the Dutch of you will know that he titular, and he saw, he showed us all this fancy stuff like, you know, ordering your groceries from a computer from your home, like threatening stuff that we didn't believe was coming. I think five years ago, you would never have invited me to any lunch session like your breakfast session like this, because, you know, this whole thing about cars had nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do with the internet. And I think that is one of the first changes that we've seen over the last couple of years. Um, that, and I'm experiencing this as, as a relatively new head of unit, that the cars become sort of the center of uh, what is happening. And why is that? Because I think precisely for the three reasons that Pilar um, uh, mentioned, it's all about the digitization of industries, not only of those internet geeks uh, being somewhere in a room or a garage doing all sorts of fancy stuff, but there's things that internet connects to the manufacturing world. And, 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 and it's precisely through those three elements, the digitization of industry, the 5G and IoT developments, and the data economy that we actually have a role to play in this uh, uh, discussion. So that is why we're here today, in my view. Why am I here today as a government? Because, you know, in, in a way, uh, I, I, I do not operate roads, I do not construct vehicles, and I have no telecom lines. But there are a number of essential um, public policy issues that we are trying to address with these con connected cars, as you could call it, we in, in bureaucratic terms call it cooperative, connected, and automated mobility, because it's actually much more than just cars or, or driving. The first reason is road safety. I think Pilar mentioned that as well. Road safety will be enhanced by uh, uh, having, let's say, the cars driving themselves rather than you and me sitting in a car. I mean, we are the risk. We are actually the danger, not the cars. The second is uh, environmental concerns, because we speak about the connected cars. They will be largely automated, but most likely they will also be largely electrical over time. Yeah. So these things converge, so there's an environmental uh, dimension to this as well. And, and that is where DG Connect is uh, 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 interested. We also see new business models developing. I actually don't know whether the car companies will be the ones producing the cars or the sub-suppliers of the cars, or whether the telecoms will be the producers of the cars or the sub-suppliers of the cars, or, or whether it's going to be a funny mix. So, you see these business um, models developing, and that is also why, to anticipate a question that I often get, you see a very complex ecosystem of industry involvement, but also of government involvement. Yes, you could have invited three other heads of units today from three different DGs. And, as we would like to say, we are interchangeable. So whether you invite the colleague for a move, for Grove, or RTD, or me, it's, it's that same storyline that we're trying to develop. So it's a complex ecosystem, but we're trying to join it, join up and, and, and share these things with all the different uh, discussions that we have and the different angles we've taken to these um, uh, discussions. And that brings me to the, the biggest asset that I think you will also witness today. And it's actually that we got various industries together in the room. Um, I think five years ago, uh, Commissioner Ertinger would meet uh, BMW CEO and uh, a whole conversation about the connected cars. And then a day later, he would meet Deutsche Telekom and a conversation about cars. And then he would know, well, actually, it's not very joined up, is it? Um, and uh, that is why he initiated that round table, because we had a lot of conversations uh, going on already on automated cars and connected cars, whether corporate driving, ITS, whatever name you um, you give to this, but I think the real power that I've seen over the last uh, year, and I'm happy to step in at this stage actually, is the fact that industry has joined up. And that is not an easy task, because it's, 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 
in a way, we think that it's industry and they're sort of out there, but they're different industries. And I, I come to the challenges uh, uh, later. So we've seen the uh, European Automotive and Telecom Alliance uh, come into fruition recently. There's a 5G Automotive Alliance, and there's various bits and pieces coming together to actually say, let's get these things done on, on the ground. Recently, we were pleased to see that also the member states, who already have various conversations on these issues in various groups, uh, I won't mention all of them, you probably know them better than I do, uh, Sea Roads and uh, and, and, and uh, what is it, the field operational test group and there's various uh, things uh, coming together. But we actually said a digital day, you know, digital is the new gold or digital is the new oil, whatever you want to, to call this. It would be good if the member states witness what is happening in industry and say, we are willing to sign up and assist you in getting real tests going uh, on the ground and, and see how we can work the, the regulation around it. So we think that was a was a, a, a real success. It's also the first challenge I would like to mention. And that is, and, and we're not there yet, and that is my call to industry, my call to members. Say we do all these tests, and then I look at the country I know best, the Netherlands, and then they test 5G in the north, and they have a corridor in the south, and they do automated driving in a city that's not connected to any of those two. Can we join up some of these efforts? Can we bring the various things together on real cross-border corridors, as we say, the intelligent corridors? Can we find that? There, there's, there's, the basis is there. We have our, our network, sea road network. You know, the, the, the fundamentals are there, but we're not there yet in doing it. I think the good initiative was from the French and the Germans with the Metz Metzi group. So let's do all those tests there and everything together and not a bit here and a bit there. So that is our first challenge to actually bring it together. And that is a challenge in two ways. First of all, technologically, and then I think we have three speakers that will probably also look at that element. But it's also a challenge legally, because uh, you know if we start doing cross-board, I think even in the States, cross-state is difficult. Uh, uh, but in Europe, it's even more difficult. But I know that member states are willing to engage and, and, and see how they can, can interpret the regulation flexibly. So that's our first challenge. The second challenge is actually with industry, and that is to match roadmaps and business plans. A software company does not have a 30-year uh, investment plan and, and a rollout of models. And a car company cannot have a new model every six months. So somehow we need to join up these models to make sure that technology can be updated, whether it's software, hardware, that it can be updated. And that is not easy, because it's a fundamentally different business line in the way that we're in. And that is something that we have asked industry to do, to align the roadmaps and, and to see how we can uh, match that. Also, we would have to look at the data solutions. I mean, it's one of the few things that all our stakeholders put together can't sort out. What is the data management model? Uh, now, most of the time they come and talk to Claire, Joanna, and, and me and say, like, well, there's five options, would you choose? And my line is, no, I'm not going to choose. I'm going to lock you up in this room, maybe Pilar, we can get the room for another half a day and uh, you tell us when there's white smoke because we all know the parameters about security on the one hand, competitiveness on the other hand, get it sorted because in the end you're going to do that because whatever solution I will find and with the help of the parliament and the council, I'm sure 80% of you will criticize us as the viewers of Brussels bureaucrats who haven't understood the thing because we didn't take your solution. So that is something that we can work on data management very important in this in this uh, uh, light is also uh, security not only the safety security if you like the road safety so we're not going to put connected cars on the road that are less safe than the cars are now that's uh, that's uh, uh, but also the car needs to be secured i don't think that 30 years ago we would have worried we, we were actually worrying about stolen cars. Now, actually, we don't care about stolen cars anymore because of GPS tracker to get them back very quickly. But we actually we are worried about the hacked cars, which is a different way of stealing a car. And that is something that we really need to address because that is essential for citizens' acceptance of these connected and automated cars. And that is also something we should not forget. Some people are actually afraid of what we are trying to do. And not only are they afraid technologically, some are also rightly afraid for their jobs because uh, you know a driverless car doesn't need a driver, and there are quite a few people that make a living out of driving. So that is something that we really need to look at. 
I think that we are strong with the industry being uh, uh, put together, with governments having joined up. And in that sense, it's actually quite interesting to see how uh, our president, and that I don't, well, I, we didn't advise him, and I don't think any of my colleagues did, but he put the connected cars as one of the examples in his five scenarios, I mean, if you've read the white paper. And it is actually interesting to see what we can do. So here's not the commission dumping all sorts of legislation on you, but here's the commission offering a helping hand to make sure that what industry wants, what the various governments want for, for public policy reasons, can actually be achieved at a European level, meaning that we can have seamless driving across the borders, but also that we can maintain, uh, uh, in a way, global competitiveness and value added from the European industry of the various sorts uh, uh, that we have. And that is, if you like, the ambition that collectively we have in the European Union. I think it's shared by what I see from Parliament and Council. But it requires us probably to operate slightly different than we have done before. Um, and be flexible in the way we interpret regulation. But I see a, re a willingness to do so. I see good vibes, if you like. And I hope with the three speakers, you will actually bring those same vibes uh, with you home today. Thank you.